Hi everyone, today we have with us Agaste Shukla from University Institute of Legal Studies, Punjab, who has emerged as the winner of the GNLU Nishit Desai Associates Policy Drafting Competition 2024. Firstly, big congratulations to you, Agastya, for your success in this prestigious competition. Before we begin Thank talking you. about the journey, I request you to please introduce yourself to the audience. Yes. Uh, thank you, Niharika. Uh, myself, Agastya, and I am a fourth-year law student from Punjab University. Uh, my primary area of interests in law uh, have been in the, in the areas of taxation, in the areas of competition, and this strong interplay with the policy interventions itself. What I believe is that policy is what creates the legislation and then ultimately the, these are advocated or implemented and then ultimately affect the stakeholders. So for me, uh, winning this policy competition was uh, important as well as very uh, kind of interesting for me since uh, policy competition is something, uh, since policy making is something that intrigues me very much. So this is what, uh, primarily got me interested into policy drafting competition and specifically uh, the GNL Unishad Desai Associates policy drafting competitions itself. Right. Uh, to start off the discussion, please tell us about the structure of this competition and the capacity in which you took part. Right. Uh, so the structure of the competition goes like uh, the proposition uh, was rolled out one on one and a half month prior to the competition itself. And uh, so you have basically, you're marked on two bases. 50% of the marks are for the policy uh, drafting. And the second and the 50% rest 50% is for the uh, presentation part of it. So the, well, the structure of the competition was such that roughly 60 to 65 plus teams were participating in this competition. And out of those, uh, 11 teams got selected for the presentation part. So 11 policies were particularly selected for the presentation. Uh, and over there in, in Gujarat National Law University, uh, the presentation was done. And then we saw, like, then, uh, you know, the results were out and I was declared as the winner. Uh, also, I would also like to mention a very uh, funny thing, uh, in fact, which is that out of 11 teams, 10 teams were having two member uh, members in their team. And I was alone. <laughs> So I think that probably gave me an edge with regards to the same that I was alone in my team. So, uh, you know, I, it helped me it quite a, it quite a bit helped me, uh, in, you know, acing this competition. So yes, uh, this was about the structure of the competition. Right. Uh, how did you prepare for this competition? So what were some of the key resources or tools that you found most helpful in drafting your policy? Uh, what I think is, uh, I have read the proposition roughly uh, around more than 20 times at the in just one single instance itself. So reading the proposition was the first important thing. Uh, so by reading the proposition, the policy proposition, what I understood was that there are a certain factors that need to be catered to in the policy that I make. So I took out those particular policy, uh, you know, parameters. And then I drafted my policy being very specific and relevant to only those parameters. So just to give an instance, my policy was uh, on the social impact or the, so basically it was in the blended finance in the gift city in the IFSCs. So that would suggest me that starting of new ventures that particularly impact that particularly have a social impact over the policy recommendations in the gift city itself. So there were three to four parameters that came out in the, from the policy, from the reading of the policy proposition itself. The number one parameter being that there was a lack of transparency. There were regulatory gridlocks. There were accountability problems. So I, with my policy, I gave an effective solution to all of those problems and the parameters thereof. Uh, for the second part of the resources, firstly, uh, what helped me in specific to this policy competition was the gift city's website itself. And second was Nish some very good commendable resources from Nishad Desai Associates uh, website and the hotlines that they are used, the researchers created, and they're very good. And some other research papers as well. So this is what particularly helped me draft a good policy with regards to the same. 
Right. Uh, in your opinion, what specific skills would you say are crucial for excelling in such competitions? And uh, how can you say law stu uh, students can develop these skills while in law school? Right. Uh, for skills, I would like to uh, firstly tell about the template of the policy. Uh, template was particularly the introduction and the existing jurisprudence and then your policy recommendations and ultimately the conclusion. So two parts arise. Number one, the so two major things that arise out of the same is the policy recommendations and second, the existing jurisprudence. So for the skills part of it, to understand the existing jurisprudence, you need a very strong research skills. So from research skills, I mean that you should be knowing each and every uh, update, any no notification that has come up with regards to, let's say for, in my case, uh, gift city or any development that has been there. So that amounts to the existing jurisprudence. So what my policy uh, entailed was uh, the existing regulation norms of FEMA, FCRA, tax policy, CSR, uh, and other, all of the regulations that are already existing. And, and the challenge was that the policy was to be drafted under eight pages. So the biggest challenge was to effectively manage the, uh, the proposed framework and the existing jurisprudence. So I, so the existing jurisprudence, what I particularly did was just took out the very specific and relevant parts of all the existing jurisprudence that is, uh, you know, available. So for that research skills are very important. And secondly, for the policy proposal, I think, uh, this, there is a very important skill that is quite undermined in, you know, that is not even heard of in certain, you know, in law schools or law students. And they're not like the skill is, is not even taught and the skill is second order thinking. So uh, any policy requires existing jurisprudence and that forms as a basis. And what you need to eventually propose out of the policy is the second order or a third order thinking of the same. So what are the consequences or what could be the possible ramifications of my policy proposal? And how do we address this? Address this. And this is what I particularly think is very important. And for me, uh, I developed this particular skill by working in a think tank called Punch Policy. Uh, I'm a researcher over there. So I was already working in a you know, Punjab based policy think tank. So the skill of, you know, thinking of all the ramifications was already entailed in me, but this is what I feel is uh, very important researching and second order thinking consequence thinking of the, for law students, if they wish to go into the policy drafting or policy making or policy uh, presentations. Right. Uh, what strategies do you uh, did you use to ensure that your policy was comprehensive, creative, and practical at the same time? All right. Uh, I think there are, I would just say two words. I was pretty much specific about all the policy, be it, uh, you know, using the existing regulation norms. Uh, just like I mentioned, the FCRA norms, the taxation norms, the direct tax norms, uh, the alternative investment fund norms, which are, which I'm just speaking uh, like regulations which are very specific to my policy. Uh, so I was very specific and the very important other thing is the other parameter is the being relevant about it as well. So I think uh, being specific and relevant is what helped me out. And I also balanced the creativity uh, with that. So, yes. Right. Uh, lastly, for students who are new to policy drafting, what initial steps would you recommend? All right. That's a good question. Uh, so I would just give my experience to it. Uh, first of all, if there is a proposition, read the proposition very well, uh, you know, like 10 or 20 times so that you could understand the nuances and you could read the read between the lines. Secondly, what I would suggest is uh, a very good amount of literature review. I think another important thing that can be undermined in, in the sense of law students or in specifics to the policy competition is uh, the literature review or the quantity of the literature review. I think the quantity of the literature review also matters a lot because in that way, you would be able to differentiate, differentiate between a good quality of uh, paper and a bad quality paper. 
and then you could lead your way to your good quality paper. So I think the quantity of the literature review would matter a lot. And thirdly, read, read a lot, uh, read the newspapers, read, get updated on all of your reading, the basic readings. Uh, this is what I would particularly suggest for someone who is, you know, quite, quite interested in the pol in the policy making also, uh, like policy involves a lot of, uh, reading upon the research papers as well. Uh, just for example, I'm currently working in a project that involves uh, agro processing policy for Punjab. So I think all, so the most important thing that I could particularly find out was in specific to the policy making was the stakeholder consultations. So any policy would be rendered futile if there are no stakeholder consultations. So I think uh, stakeholder consultations is something that matters a lot. So these are roughly three to four parameters that are, you know, you need to keep in mind while drafting a good policy. So this is it. All right, Agastya, thank you for being here and sharing your journey with our audience. I am very certain they will benefit greatly from your insights. Keep up with the competitions and all the very best for your journey ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.